I use as the basis for, for this group of paintings poems by a poet named Han Shan, who was a Dang Dynasty poet, uh, who wrote the kind of Zen nature poems. And I took that structure, which was like four couplets, you know, one line, two line, line, two line, uh, and used that as the basis for the paintings. And that's how each painting started, with that basic structure, which also is a form of the grid. So it didn't seem to me too far from other things I've been doing. Uh, I used long-handled brushes, 24 inches to 36 inches, and I put it on, put the paint on with the brush and then go immediately go right. And that way you have a certain distance from the painting, you can see what you're drawing. Uh, and you can see the totality of the canvas. And then I go back in, after I've done that, I go back in with a palette knife and scrape off the excess paint, do some redrawing, and at some point maybe erase, you know, using a paper towel bounty. And then there are corrections, and I, you know, would erase just by painting white over the existing black line. And these, lines start becoming counter figures or ghost figures and I would use that idea in the construction of the space of the painting. Uh, what I like about this is this kind of starkness and yet there's a complexity to the image. Also I made them very big because I wanted to make big paintings that had energy to them. In the poems, he's const they're constantly talking about these monks wandering in the mountains and they're meditating and the, the achievement of, true, of truth, you know, you cross this bridge and it's a very tricky stone bridge high in the Ten Tai Mountains. You cross the bridge and that's where the immortals are living. And this for this painting evolved so that there was a sort of arc. And so that's why it's called Cold Mountain Bridge.